This is Danny McFarlane. Woo! Dr. C. Love is in the house today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Today, we're going to start off by being walking the talk, right? The talk. We're going to be a little vulnerable Woo. and share some of our own personal challenges we've gone through in life. You yeah. want to go first? Uh, well, I was thinking maybe you'd go first. How about you go first? Uh, uh, no, I'm pretty sure that beauty goes before age, so... Yes, a beauty, and um, I believe I beat you on both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, ladies' choice. Go, Rochambeau, Rochambeau. Okay. You ready? Kai. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. three, right? <laughs> Kai. What? what? Kai one, by Bo. Oh! Wait, man, wait, you won. Man. You get to go first. <laughs> No, no, I think you're up, girl. I think you're up. All right. I got it. I got it. I'm ready. All right. You ready? ready? Let's see what, um, (sighs) all right. We got to get serious. Well, kind of serious, but stuff that definitely comes close to home. Uh, Is there, I mean, when you're looking back in your life and some of the, maybe a really big struggle that you found on the other end of it ended up giving maybe the greatest opportunity for expansion but it was through really through the challenge of it. Oh yeah. I mean, and to just, just jump right in, you know, it's uh, when I was 18, my twin brother was in a car accident on his way home from college and he was in critical condition for three weeks. During those three weeks, it was the first time that I had to ever really ask myself, Who am I? Why am I? Where am I? I didn't really understand it. And then his his soul left his body. And I said goodbye in this in this realm, in this way. And and to be honest with you, I spent a year and a half just trying to breathe. I mean, like that that serious. If I can wake up in the morning. If I can, you know, take care of myself, you know, even even down to the personal hygiene, brushing teeth, just that <clears throat> whole kind of caring for the physical body right. at a time where I was experiencing um, out of bodiness. And I and I honestly I didn't know whether some of it was the twin factor I that was making me feel the pull away from the realm or if it was just the grief. Or maybe probably a combination of both. Well, if, if you don't mind, I, I want to rewind it back a little bit okay. because that whole twin thing, <laughs> that's not something I mean, we each are faced with loss in our own way. Mm-hmm. But there is something unique about that twin aspect. Mm-hmm. And I'm just curious, if you don't mind sharing, what happened for what happened the accident or what? Um, the driver fell asleep. It was my sister, you know, they had done a turnaround trip and um, to pick him up, to bring him home from his first year at Morehouse. And it was three of them in the car. Um, And Garnett, my twin, he was in the back with his dumbbells and trunks and all the stuff that people have in their dorm room first year. And um, the other passenger that was helping drive, You know, he broke leg, arm, something like that. But the van, it flipped. It went through one of those barriers in the highway where you see where the bridge comes, the street comes. It went through that and rolled out. And as it came out, it was rolling. And, um, you know, they said if my sister hadn't climbed out of the truck and she used her whole body weight with both doors and she pulled the doors like open. She pulled the doors off the, literally like I'm what? off the van. Oh, and wow. that was how he was able to get enough air. And that bought us time or else it would have been a completely different kind of phone call. Wow. That reminds me of, um, <clears throat> they talk about whether it's accidents or different circumstances with mothers, with their children, they mm-hmm. get that superhuman strength and, it yeah. sounds like uh, that kicked in for your sister. And, it really did. Wow. You know, and, and, and that that little three-week window yeah. to have a chance to even wrap <clears throat> the mind around the idea that they might leave is such, a, is such a gift. You know, so many people just get that one phone call that tells them that their loved one is just gone. And it's just like, wait, what? 
I don't I don't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a different kind of shock when there's no prep time. Literally just had that happen just two weeks ago to my aunt. Um, so I'm curious during that three week period was were you able to talk to him? Was he aware at all? Was um, he couldn't talk? He had trach pins in his oh. legs, pins in his head, and initially said he had broken his neck, but it turned out it wasn't quite that. Um, but no, he couldn't talk, and and. Three weeks in a row, three weekends in a row, he went into critical condition. Like they had to like revive him, and and I remember on one of the incidents, I wasn't at the hospital, and and they called and they were like, "You need to get here quick," and so I was just in the car in the back seat, and I was scared, and so I was like, "I got to get to him. I have to get to him," and my spirit just closed my eyes, and I just said, "Garnett." Garnett, Garnett, and and his eyes appeared in my eyes like as if he was literally right in front of my face. And then there were like these those seems like stars or galaxies like all behind him. And it wasn't his clear face, but it was clearly his eyes. And wow. I talked to him. I was like, you know, don't don't go yet. We're on the way. You know, stay with us. Stay with us, and he did. He wow. he he lived on uh, at least another <clears throat> at least another week. I think that was about wow. midpoint that that happened. And and it's funny how sometimes I put these things out of my mind. Wow. On that same flip side, his body had started like it was too much. The air that they were pumping into his lungs was leaking into his body, oh, and he man. started blowing up like a balloon. And 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 I got the sense that it was time, and mm-hmm. I was actually born first, and and so I said, I need to get to a swimming pool, and I asked the hospital, where's the swimming pool? I need a swimming pool, and they let me use the doctor's pool that was on the roof, and it was a cloudy day in Chicago, yeah. May twenty eighth, nineteen eighty nine, and. I put on my swimsuit. I got in the swimming pool and I said, got under the water and I said, Garnett, listen to me. It's time for you to go follow me. And I just swam and swam and swam and swam and um, said, it's okay. We'll be all right. It's time for you to go now. Your body is gone. But we know, you know, we know you're in our hearts and I know how to reach you. So it's okay. We got this. And I came up out the water. And on this cloudy day, I opened up a little court. And it was like this ray of light shining straight down on me, glistening off my face. And I was like, message delivered. That's how it was. It was like I knew absolutely he got the message. And literally before i could even get out of the pool somebody they came running karma karma come quick we need you to come so he's fading and then they was all around them wow. praying and in a circle and i was complete at that moment right. but for my family i joined right, the right. circle of of prayer and grief and i guess it has to also be apprehension what's life after this mm-hmm. what does it look like and so I took the last flight with all of my family members on Memorial Day, May 29, 1989. My mother, my father, my sister, my twin brother in the cargo bay in the casket. Wow. And I remember just staring out the window to the clouds <clears throat> like, what now? And that's a question that I had for a couple of years. Like, what now? What am I supposed to do now? I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. Well, that's an incredible example of uh, we hear these stories of twins and the way they're connected. Uh, I mean, we're all connected, but it seems like twins seem to have these unique experiences mm-hmm. of, of really deeply being connected and feeling what one another are doing. And that's an unbelievable story going to the pool and that experience you had. 
after was there did you ever notice like a shift after like a difference in connection in any way i don't know if any of that um well, well I, I, I'll use an example. Yeah. That cause so like I said, I was at this just kind of lost for a while. Like at, right after his death. Yeah, just okay. the shock. I mean, I was strong for all the family and right. everything else. And then after that, I three months later, I went away to college. So I really separated from all my family. But I was at Howard. That was my dream school, mm. and I knew he would want me to press on. So that's what I did. Yeah. And um, but it was just. Agony. It's like hard to open up a book and care what's on page fifty-seven when I'm trying to breathe, and um, and it was just so painful. One day, I unplugged the phone in my dorm room from the wall, and I picked up the phone. Da da da. Hi, is this heaven? <laughs> oh Jesus! Hey, what's up? Is Garnett there with you? I know he better be. Can I can I talk to him for a minute? And he got on the phone and I cried and I was like, I miss you so much. I cried, I miss you so much. And you know, he talked to me, you know, and you know, he shared some things. And when I got off the phone, I said bye. At first I was saying, don't go. Mm-hmm. And he just held with me from the cosmos until I could be, because I was strong enough to hang up the phone. And I was like, so grateful. That's how I came up with the term spirit tale. I know how to reach relatives <laughs> that are gone. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> Did you walk away with it? Is there a certain like message or shift that you feel like after that conversation? that road with I, you. I had I think I think that was actually even though I still didn't have the how worked out right I made a decision to try to do this thing called life because up until that point I was like bump this I'm out if these are the rules, folks right. can just die like this. Right. If this is the rules, what's the point? I don't want to play. <laughs> I don't like this game. Yeah. Stop the ride. Let me off. Wow. So what I'm hearing is you got the why. I don't know if that re- it resonates, but it's like often they say you just need to find your why. Too often we get stuck up in the how and what, and it's just the why. And the why gives you purpose. Mm-hmm. And and then the, the rest figures itself out. It reveals itself. It reveals itself, <laughs> right? So and after that, you felt repairs like, itself. Okay, there's a purpose, a meaning for me to move on. Yeah, and and yeah. that began my quest. You asked me one time we were talking mm-hmm. about you know the doctor. I am a metaphysician. All of that was a byproduct of my twin. No, Wait a minute, I can no. talk to him through the realms. Okay, I need to study more about this. Oh, this thing around me. This mm. is a real energy body. Oh, chakras. This. I mean, it just opened up the whole thing. And 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 love. That was his final words to me. I love you. And this was a few, a couple of weeks before the accident. He never said. Oh, really? So before he had passed, he said that to you here in the physical world. Exactly. So like growing up, you know, I'd always be like, I love you. And I don't know if it's a, a boy thing or guy right. thing, but he was just always like, me too. <laughs> he wouldn't say, actually, I love you. So like yeah. two weeks before the yeah. accident, I was talking to him on the phone and I was like, I love you. And he said, I love you too. Wow. Danny, I literally took my hand like this, looked at the phone and said, what? Okay, I love you. Bye. I was like, not knowing that those would be the last words, that his everlasting wow. you know, message to me was wow. love. And so once I decided to live, I knew I was going to need love to do it. Mm. There's love from all of that time to now. Love is been the only thing that I have found in this realm that's greater than pain. Wow. And love makes us do things in spite of the pain. You know, how many times, you know, back in in those fresh moments when I would be on a, a freeway and coming over one of those single 
passes. Oh, yeah. You know, just thinking if I just go straight, this will be over quick. Right. But my love for my family. Mm-hmm. I'm like, my mama, oh, no. Was it, you know, my friends, what would they think? Would they this, they that, they other? And, and then that's when I also figured out that anybody who truly gets challenged in this lifetime wonders at some point can they do it wow (laughs) what what do you think do you think that that's true well i I think you're right love is is often the thing that keeps us going and uh shifting and what i heard here more than anything is your ability to shift into the gratitude shifting into what you have versus what you don't have. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds like when you catch yourself in the, the what we might call scarcity mentality or the lack or the loss, maybe loss. the better mm-hmm. word, the loss, you know, shifting into a, a, a way of, and it doesn't mean it's not discounting that that loss or that experience doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. It's like, how can we serve us to get through those challenges and, and to often think about, and be grateful for the time that we did have for that person. Mm-hmm. The experiences that we did get, whether it was one day or 10 years or 18 years. To, I think, and that, I think, reveals itself over time. It it's does. like, you know, the gratitude first shows up, you hug the pillow, it still smells mm-hmm. like them. His old suit, his yeah. old shirt, his favorite television show, you know, looking for them. And like, mm-hmm. it was funny, the uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Carlton, Carlton. Right. His character always reminded me of my twin, so I took comfort. Oh, really? <laughs> in having him, I was like, I felt like my brother was there whenever I was watching it. And then, as time would have it, I actually got the opportunity to meet him. Really. And nice. to thank him, and to tell him, and and express just the gratitude of being able to see him on television every week during that time just to catch that glimpse or essence wow. of my and I was able to show him a picture of my twin and he could see the resemblance really? yeah. too. It was just great. I was like it was just amazing. Yeah, it must have been a great experience for him because that's probably the last thing that he's thinking in the way that he's helping people. But uh it was a little piece of your brother you got every mm-hmm. episode. Yeah, really <laughs> absolutely just yeah. yeah. I love that. What were you, what would you say were so some of the greatest challenges during that time. I mean, was there ever times of like disconnect or or, or denial or any, any? No. no, no, because remember, I, I was the one that ushered him to the gate, right. so there was no denial. There right. was no. I wasn't, and I wasn't mad at him, and I wasn't mad at God. You know, like some people, that's a response to grief. You know, if right. they have a relationship with God, they're like, how could you do this to me? Right. You betrayed me. I didn't, I was just too sad. Mm. I was too sad to blame anybody. I was just, and I was like, where Where do I belong now? Right. I mean, and then I started doing research about twins who lost their twins. And, and then I found out that there's this group called Twinless Twins. That just made, that's about the saddest thing I ever heard, the twinless wow. twins. I was like, oh, man, okay, no. Like, did you did you join it? Or? I didn't. I think one day I will because I know they've been around forever. But that was just, that was like, I would that just felt like. Well, what was the feeling? What was the. First, I was glad, like, okay, some people who finally know yeah. how I feel because most people, right. they'll say you're born by yourself You'll die. You die by yourself, and I'm saying I have no idea what that means. I have no conception point mm. in order to comprehend that because I incubated, I baked, I formed, and grew intertwined with another soul in a human body. Wow! And I was not yeah. born by myself. That whole wow. experience was different. I was like, but I will be leaving by myself. I'll be living the rest of this by right. myself. And you know, have you? I'll be like, can I today? I'm coming to join you, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm wondering, is there because you say you're living it the rest by yourself, and I wonder if 
because he was your twin and the connection you had, has there been any sense of connection still with him throughout your life that oh, feels like abs- that 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 you can feel that presence with you? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I I'll give you one good example. Yeah. I had to take retake my graduate record exams for grad school. And and I just never been a fan of standardized tests. Did he help you cheat? <laughs> um, I need a twin like that. Like, yeah, you know, okay. I mean, I think I might have asked him what was this answer a couple of times. I don't know if he told me, uh, my inner voice told me, but, but I was nervous. I had plans. Yeah. I wanted to go to SC, and I needed certain scores. Right. So when I went into the classes, Kaplan, I did all of that. But that would not help my fear. It helped me be more prepared, but that anxiety was still there because me knowing the right answer and me demonstrating that on the test was often two different things, you Uh, know, because of the atmosphere of the test is just pressurized. You all in here with these different people and we're all like, it just makes me nervous. You hear the the papers erasing and the pens moving and it just, I just, you know, so... When I was getting up to get dressed to go take the exam, and I looked into the mirror, I saw him look back at me through my own eyes like he was before. And he was like, like kind of like blinked at me. And then I was like, oh, yeah. I had had this whole dream where I played. We played around, ran around, whatever it was we were doing. But he came and visited me in my dream, and that was one of, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of those dreams, right. especially even up to that point. But I felt like how mm. thoughtful for you to come from wherever you are doing whatever you're doing to just let me know unequivocally <laughs> that you are here with me today, this morning. So, of course, I finished getting ready crying. Right. And then I went and handled my business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I didn't have that alone yeah, feeling. I didn't alone. have that scared feeling. Yeah. And then so many times it's been like that. What a great reminder that we're not alone. It's so so easy, I think, in the world and the way that we live life to get so caught up <clears throat> in the I, mm-hmm. in the I experience in the world. And I think there there's definitely that ability to, to, to just really recognize that we're not alone. Mm-hmm. We're really not. And... Uh, Sometimes when we're focused on the things that are different about us than everyone else, it can feel alone. Mm-hmm. You know, we're able to shift that perspective into recognizing the how many other things are in common yes. about us. And I think that it's kind of like we were talking about with the loss thing. It's not the discount that loss, but when we shift that way of thinking, shift our perspective into the gratitude yes. and appreciation for what we did have and what we do have, and and uh, that mm-hmm. creates an overall shift in us. Yes, it does. Right, and it's kind of that same thing of um, you know, whenever we start to feel alone. And I, and I can relate to that definitely. And it's really easy to start getting isolated. And it's that opportunity to, I guess, remember that when we're in that space, that we're not alone. No, and not and alone. how wonderful for your brother to, to show up in that way and, Absolutely. and guide you out of that. And, you know, and it's yeah. funny now that we're talking about this, which is why it's so good to just, you know, dialogue. It just remind me that then I went through this phase where I was very much I. So in part of my mental preparation for living the rest of my life without my twin and not feeling half, because that's Mm -hmm. how I did for a long time. I just felt half. I just felt incomplete. Like I missed half of me is missing, you know. And and so then I started using a lot of I language. Uh I, 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 me, me, I, because that was my adjustment from the we. And so when I was pledging my sorority... (laughs) What? That was like the biggest <laughs> lesson. The big sisters were like, oh. it's we. It's uh-huh. we. It's we. Because I kept saying me and I. And so, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm still learning that. I'm, you know, to feel safe, to love at that level, to trust, 
you know, um, also felt like if I didn't get close to people, then it wouldn't hurt. Right. If if they died, because that was what I was dealing with, death. But I, then I realized the hard way wow. that if I withhold my loving, if I withhold my time from people that I love because I'm afraid to hurt, if I mm. lose them, the only thing I lose is memories, and memories are the yeah. only thing that sustains us after we say bye. They live on in our hearts and in wow. our head. Wow. You know, so I miss those extra moments to immortalize their love. Wow. I mean, what what is that saying? Better to have loved than to never loved at all? Mm-hmm. And, and that was also my prayer. I was like, if my heart has to harden, because that's what happens a lot of times. People get hurt. They get hard. Their right. heart. Because if my heart has to harden, please let it harden open so I don't miss the opportunity to love. Like, I'm willing to take the chance to be hurt. What? Wow. You think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go? (laughs) Well, I had the visual of your heart hardening open. (laughs) You're like, well, if you are going to (laughs) harden, I want you to harden like this. That is interesting, right? Because that's the interesting trade-off in that moment. And I don't know what you were going through and how you reflect back on that now, because this was obviously a while ago. But there was part of you that probably associated hurt to love still and was like I'm willing to hurt just as long as I love Mm -hmm. and I would choose that over not loving at all yeah absolutely yeah but it's it's so interesting though that I mean that could go in a whole other crazy topic we'll maybe say for another day Mm -hmm. but that whole idea that Love is pain. The associated, the, maybe the, the illusion or misbelief that we have that love or pain comes with love, that hurt comes with love, right? And in and, and, <laughs> and, and, and the years subsequent, right now. <laughs> the revelation that I've had right. about that is just this whole, you know, you see people getting the tattoos, they yep. down love, they yeah. forget love, they use other right. words and stuff like right. that. And I was like, look, yeah. why does love keep having to take the rap for stuff the ego does? Always take love didn't name. do that. <laughs> love just loves. Now, yes. if they like, you can't never leave me. And I don't, that's not love. That love has nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. Tina Turner. What's love <laughs> got to do, got got to to do, do with, with it? it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. We Absolutely. had our time together, yeah. whether I physically leave this body and go on to another realm, or if I get up and walk out of the door and say, thanks for the time we had yeah. together, love you forever, peace, yeah. namaste, you know, yeah. Rashad, whatever you're saying, yeah. you know, I say, you know, but we had our time together and just to be grateful for that and move forward, right. that's love, yeah. this possessive You'll never find somebody else like me. Well, please. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, which just shows it's, it's the judgment that causes the hurt. And the fear of the never fear. having love right. again. Yeah. And and we're human. But you, and it's natural. And I don't want to go you know, without saying that. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're human. And, and it's not saying that we're not going to hurt or we shouldn't. Because there's no shoulds. Mm-hmm. You know, no shitting on ourselves here, you know. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Oh, oh. Get some spray. Oh, you need some tissue. You want to get some tissue? You need a oh, moment. I'll second. be back <laughs> next week. <laughs> but, you know, we're human. We're going to have... Um, we're going to have pain and we're going to have hurt. That's the journey. That's, that's the, the journey. deal. That's that the, is the journey, right? That's the, that's the not so small print. Right. But it's like recognizing that that's not a fact. That's not a story we have to buy into. It's an illusion. And, and I always talk about like the recoil period. Like I don't look to, like in my own growth to, mm-hmm. to move past the idea that I'm not supposed to. It's like. Yes, I'm going to get upset. I'm going to get, I got irritated and we're driving here because of the traffic. <laughs> Gotta love it. Like, man, I did not. <laughs> you didn't have, you didn't have a playlist on. Like, just told me the, the wrong way. That's, you know, I'm like, at a you avoided and something like, oh, that you right, didn't even right, know you right, were being. <laughs> right. But the point being is it's like, do I let it hang with me? You know, yeah, I get upset. What's a recoil period back? You know, like I focus more on like, how long does it take for me to get back to center? Not mm-hmm. that I'm not supposed to get upset, but like, hey, get triggered and cool. Like, if, if 
I'm back in my loving sooner than I was a year ago, then I'm, I'm heading the right direction. So, Amen to that. Yeah. And it made me think there was a song that says, love is not possession. I'm trying to think who's, mm. love is not possession. I don't, can, I can hear the lines probably going to pop later while I'm just like driving or yeah. something. But the moment that love becomes, with quote unquote, love becomes possession or even lack of gratitude, you know, or, you know, or, or trying to suppress or repress anyone. That is the moment that the love is actually gone. Mm. The only way for love to actually last forever is to respect that love is eternal. Mm -hmm. And anything that has been gained can never be lost. Mm -hmm. That's the love. Yeah. And just the excitement to know that there's more love. And when you get that, then it can get kind of exciting. Like, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you're just were reminding me to, I really want to ask when you're in, when you were in the rut or you were in the pain of losing your brother, of mm -hmm. uh, what were there certain things that supported you to, even if it was, you know, you might do something differently than you did then, but were there certain things then or now that you would say if somebody's going through that pain right now that could help support them to get them i mean i know we talked about gratitude and shifting perspective a little bit but there may be another tool that you used or helped you absolutely so i know you've heard about the university of santa monica because Definitely. that's how we met um about 10 years after the accident, you know, I had been bumping along and, you know, doing a lot of the typical things that people do to try to cope with pain. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it wasn't the, you know, the, the healthiest right. choices, you right. know, you know, times of occasion where I might drink myself to sleep, yeah. you know, because I had insomnia or I just didn't want to feel or things like that. But in terms of like long term mm -hmm. life, I knew that I had to bring in some more tools and and I've grown I've grown up in faith in the Christianity but when this hit mm -hmm. I mean to be honest you know we're just friends talking right to be honest I was like oh I finally get why the first miracle was Jesus turning water into wine I knew he was going he knew he was going to need something <laughs> 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 Go ahead, baby, get that. In my prayer, I thank nine for the wine. <laughs> you knew, oh, Jesus. Man. I knew you knew. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, yeah. So, you were embracing. You were embracing that first embracing miracle my faith. for a little bit. Yeah, my first miracle. Yeah, water wasn't gonna get it. Water was not going to get it. It was almost oh, like man. it was almost like something inside of me. And I didn't grow up around people yeah. that like drinking and right. stuff like that. It was yeah. just like. When that happened, I was like, I'm going to need a drink. This yeah. is crazy. I don't know some kind of pain reliever. And so, but as I started growing out of it, I knew I had to have something that was more, you know, healthy, sustainable. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so when I came across this advertisement for the University of Santa Monica's program in spiritual psychology, I knew instantly. It was like education the way you always wished it yeah. would be. You know, and then what if you could learn these skills while you were using these things to, you know, kind of like that heal thyself, you know, kind of go back. So University of Santa Monica was the beginning of me mm. actually claiming mm. the rest of my life. Wow. And, and I had started helping the homeless before then, yeah. you know, and I was like, these are all my brothers. So I tried right. to love that. And within the construct of the human the human service delivery system, which is a whole nother topic, it could be a whole <laughs> series. Well, we'll like the, nobody's really that. trying to break the cycle of homelessness. Right. It's a whole industry. Mm -hmm. And so when I made that the place where I pitched my mm -hmm. tent to be of service, I didn't understand what I was getting into. So after a while, when I saw that the bureaucracy is and 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 the people who had the conversation mm -hmm. were never at the table where the funds were, right. <laughs> so I left that and then I ran the LA Unified School District and I said, well, let me help prevent homelessness one child at a time, and then to see that bureaucracy, that's a whole another series. So I kept finding, looking for these places to be of service, help the homeless, help the elderly, teach the children. 
and 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 to keep bumping up against bureaucratic walls where people's personal agenda surpassed the community agenda that was going to be able to mm-hmm. be of service to any everyone because anybody can fall into a crisis anybody can be injured and lose it all quote unquote and and need that support we need our community infrastructures you know this is another topic too but jail is not the solution no. america has the highest <clears throat> incarceration rates in the world right in our great yeah. nation we can't do better than this yeah. we spend a hundred thousand dollars on every child where you well yeah i mean you're right that is a whole other topic we're just still using a lot in society very old-fashioned ways Mm-hmm. Of um, and I'm big on creating change at the root of stuff. Exactly. Whereas, but the challenge in society these days is it's about band aids, because someone needs to get reelected in two years or four years, mm-hmm. and so they're doing the quickest band aid, which then I think starts to enable and and creates more issues and problems versus like let's just look little bigger into the future let's spend more time and money even though it might take a little more time and and we might feel like some get lost in the shuffle however we only have so much resources so let exactly we just have to go long term and you know they really make a change (laughs) and it's like back to that band aid it's like they didn't get the memo it's like hey you severed an artery a (laughs) band-aid is not going to get it Thank you. That's a great. Yeah, you just seven, severed you, you an seven artery. You artery. You talk about let me put a band aid on it. Don't you see the kids are dropping out? They they already yeah. sucked down. Now marijuana is is legal everywhere, so all the children mm. are you know right. doing that. So now that becomes another layer to get through. You got right. the cell the phones. It's just. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm so looking forward. Can I just say this? I am so looking forward to the conversations that we're going to get to yes. have. I'm, I'm so looking forward to the to the friends who yes. will join us yes. as special guests, special friends, and and just to like let's like dig into this journey yeah. and let's see what's up. It just be fun, I think, to create a community. And I just really, more than anything, I feel like we want to create a safe space mm-hmm. for people to to share their thoughts, to consider different perspectives, and uh, ultimately our our journey. Ultimately, we just want to shine a, shine a light and, and stimulate more love, co- unconditional love, and laugh, and empathy, and, and, empathy. Fun. and fun, and fun. I mean, healing does not have to yeah, be like, oh yeah, my god, yeah. let me just wipe this tear. Oh yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, in some of the greatest moments in life, we won't go into the details. But in some of the greatest moments in life, we find ourselves laughing and crying at the same time over and over again. Just let your mind wander right. to some scenarios. Right. We won't talk about it, but laughing and crying at the same time. Right. And what, what, what one of the sayings also is like, hey, if, we, if I can laugh about it later, maybe, there, well. maybe there's an opportunity for me to laugh, laugh now. At it now. Can, can I save some time? <laughs> it doesn't mean we have to, but you know, it just helps in that moment when I might be stuck. And upset about something, mm-hmm. going like, wait, ten years from now, might I might I laugh about this? <laughs> exactly, and then, maybe it doesn't need to be so serious right now. And and then to just be a little more serious for a moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to say that I also allowed other people to be an ear, so I had to admit that um, I couldn't do this alone. Wow. I had to admit I I needed help. I yeah. had to admit. I was struggling with depression. I had to admit I was feeling um, alone. Yeah. As you know, you have to tell somebody that in your own way. It don't has necessarily have to be those words. But how powerful is it that we can be in a room full of people and feel alone? <laughs> so... People can't just assume, hey, it's a bunch of people in this room. Hey, nobody's feeling alone. No. Right. And, and and so um, connection and letting people be your strength. Say, like, we got you. You know, right. you, you might be feeling weak right now, but we're strong with you and we're strong for right. you. So lean on me. 
Lean on, Lean on me, me when you're, you're not me. strong, <laughs> and I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so you you know, for real. Yeah. It's like we all going to need. Yeah. Like, I'm going to need you propped up, so yeah. when I'm feeling weak, I'm going to have somebody right. for me. It's like we need to do this thing. Well, what I'm hearing is what's awesome about that is you doing the USM, it sounded like community. It sounded like you learn the tool, the, the important lesson of asking for help and not having to do it alone. And uh, I just think that's awesome. And I really appreciate you sharing your story with us today. Thank you. And, and I mean, that was incredibly touching and vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So I, I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you so much. And, and I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing yours. I know yours is, is powerful. It's been an amazing journey. So I'm looking forward Uh Rochambeau again for that, or <laughs> I won. <laughs> awesome! Well, I won. I got to go first. <laughs> well, you did win, actually. Thank you. I, we all won. Yeah, thank we, you for thank sharing you. that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And thank you guys. We really um, appreciate your time, and we just can't hope that this can be a place of community, a place of love, uh, a place to where you don't feel alone and you feel open to ask yes. for help. Absolutely. Thank Thank you you so much.